Hello guys, Luke here from Australian Off-Road. I'm taking this opportunity today. We're out in the open down at the beautiful beach. Quite a warm day here, but as you can see, we've got a bottom plus here. So this is actually the first series five bottom plus that we've developed. Um, so I just want to take this opportunity to do a bit of a walk around. I'm going to show you a few different features that have obviously changed with the five. And I'm going to show you how to set the trailer up as well. So always a good opportunity when they're out in the opens, just to show you how easy this trailer is to set up. Um, so just highlighting a few things at the front. Obviously, we've got this trailer still hitched up to the back of the car. So we can see our normal features, which would be the Arc Dual Jockey Wheel. So that'll always be standard on the trailers from the Odyssey up. And um, we've got the Cruise Master DO35 hitch, which is all locked on. So very easy to use, very easy to hitch on with. So that's why we've always really adopted that and stayed through that. Um, electronic stability control is a standard feature. So we do have quite a few cords here plugged into the back of the car. Um, so that electronic stability control runs off a red Anderson plug. So you would tend to see on, on these bigger trailers, you have a red Anderson for the trailers that have got electronic stability control and then a gray Anderson, which is what takes the charge from the vehicle. Uh, just moving on to the front of the trailer, uh, we would have two jerry cans in here as standard. So these, these jerry can holders, we don't have the actual cans in there at present, but you would tend to get your two holders on the front as standard with the two cans. And um, we've got an external tap down here for washing off with. Um, so it comes in really handy, nice and protected from these areas, but just great for if we're just pulling over somewhere and we don't necessarily want to get the kitchen out, this always comes in handy for just filling a bucket, washing your hands, washing off at the beach. Um, we've also got our main storage area through the front here. So you can see once that's open, we've got a huge storage area in the front. Um, comes in handy for all them bigger items, your chairs, your tables, um, canvas, if people are optioning canvas, they normally come in quite big bags, so a good area through the front there for that. And um, closing this down, you'll then see above one of the standard inclusions that's come across onto the Quantum and the Quantum Plus as part of the Series 5 is going to be the firewood rack. So the wood rack, the way it's designed, it'll hold on that 45 degree with these lanyards, which we can see. And um, the idea of this is to be able to load it while it's holding. So then with the holes that we've got through all the attachments on there, we can actually strap the wood in, pull it nice and tight. So this would end, end up in some form of position like this. So it's not necessarily for these lanyards to hold it during travel. That is more so we can load it. We can then tighten it all up so there's going to be no bounce as we travel. Um, so a great new standard feature. And um, we've got the stone mesh guard on the front. So sitting on the nice 45 angle um, designed for any stone impact to be uh, coming back down to the ground instead of repelling into the car. We've got the diesel heater tank on the front just situated behind that guard. So that's going to be for your standard cabin heater. Um, obviously something we're not going to be using today because it is still hot, but great feature for when we are going further down south or in them colder climates. Uh, moving around to the passenger side, we've got the pole carrier hatch, which will be the same on the driver's side. Um, so not that we really have many poles nowadays, but anti-flap kits, things like that, which come standard with this trailer would tend to be an ideal foot spot for that to be stored in. And then moving around to this passenger side. So you can see on this trailer, we've got it all closed down. Um, so I've done that on purpose. I want to take this opportunity to kind of open everything up and show you how it's all done. So the only thing I've cheated on is I have left the roof latches off. So that means I can easily jump in and lift the roof. But obviously, if I was pulling up to a campsite, I'm going to be in a similar scenario to this. So I can kind of run you through what I'd be doing. So the first thing I would be doing is uh, opening the door. So our two latches. We've got the main latch in the middle. You can then lock this door on. So if it is quite windy, like we've got a bit of wind today near the sea, and um, we can just lock that on and then we don't have to worry about this swinging. Um, now me first, I would always roll the awning out slightly. So the advantage of that is one, it gives us access to these latches nice and easily. And um, two, it also means that then we can easily jump in and lift the roof up. So I'm gonna run through that process first. So with the awning, we'll just highlight on here, there is two clips that actually hold the inner and outer arms together. So that's got to be loose like so. So we lift this up and then we lift it across and then it becomes loose here. The wheel on each side, I would tend to loosen off while I'm here at the same time too. So that one nice and loose. Same on this side. I would loosen this one off. They'll always swing to the outside. Loosen the wheel off. This is all ready now for me to roll this out. So in turn, I will find my little handle. I would make sure that the drum is clicked in the right direction, which would tend to be the opposite way to what it is now. 
obviously if you think when i've packed this trailer up i would have rolled this in so you tend to have to flick it the opposite way to bring it back out so i've just done that so now in turn i can roll this down and i would tend to work on rolling it out about a meter to a meter and a half so as long as we've got good clearance that we can hop inside and um, obviously lift the roof up um, as I said earlier, I have cheated slightly and I've actually already undone the latches. But in turn, this would now be the perfect opportunity where I've got clear access to these to undo all these latches. So that would be three on the passenger side, three on the driver's side. Yep, once that is done, I can then hop inside. Using the two roof lifters internally, I can then lift the roof up. And being that that awning is off the trailer, meaning that we've rolled it out, it just means that this lifting process is a lot easier because we aren't actually working against the tension of the drum either. So I would like to highlight that, that if we've got the room, that is optimal for setup because it makes this lifting process quite a bit easier. So the roof's now lifted, we've got the awning out. Now I would tend to get the awning set up first. Um, so I'm gonna run through that now. I'm gonna introduce Theo into the equation. So you'll have seen Theo obviously in quite a few of our videos. Now we're gonna to pretend today that Theo's never done an awning. So I'm going to work one side, Theo is going to work the opposite, and I'm going to kind of guide him through. So this is just showing you as a customer new to the trailer, kind of how easy this process is. Yep. So straight away, first thing I would be doing is I would roll this awning out far enough, which tends to work off different heights. For me, I tend to get it to about waist height. The reason being that if I get it to this height, that then means that these inner arms, which we can see that are sitting down here, are going to be able to slide and lock into play because these inner arms are key for holding tension on the awning. And um, so we always, anytime we're outside and we've got a bit of breeze, we need to make sure these are engaged. You'll see why when we set the awning up, but obviously if I get this down to a certain height, I know that I can bring these out. If I ever question that, you just, you'll get to a point where this will run up and it won't go all the way up. So all we need to do is bring the awning slightly further down to be able to bring these into play. So Theo's already done his side, so he's followed my my lead is locked his side in. Once this is locked, it can't move back out without me releasing. So once I've got it to this point, I then would tend to work on my height. Now, obviously, if we see a, an angled view of this, this is quite far down, which is not optimal for me to get underneath. So in turn, I need to lift this awning leg up to bring this at a good height so then we can easily walk in and out. So the way we do this, we grab the outer sleeve, we grab the inner arm, and then we can actually slide this up. So Theo's operating the same side as I am. I would always lift it to a point where I've got good clearance because in, in turn now, I am going to roll this slightly in. So good thing to do is stand back and just make sure it's all nice and level. Um, now the, the awning, one thing that I will highlight, the awning doesn't have to be level. Some people will tend to work on it on a bit of an angle if it's raining and they're trying to wash rain off one angle. Whereas for me in this scenario, I'm trying to set it up nice and level. So it looks pretty good there, which means we both worked at the same height. The next thing I can now do is grabbing hold of the handle. I'll hold the tension on this and I'll actually start to take a bit of tension off that drum. So it just turns slightly, which means there's no tension held on there. I can then easily flick this over, which in turn is now going to start retracting this awning back in. Now, the reason I'm doing this is one, it's giving me the clearance to get underneath there, but two, it's also shortening the length of the awning. So if it is quite windy, obviously the more that I've got this rolled out, the more flexion I'm going to get through there. So in turn, I just want to get this to a point where I've got good clearance and then I'll lock that over. So by locking that drum back over, now it's not in a motion to be retracting it in. It's holding itself in situ. I can get the handle out of the way. And then the last thing me and Theo would do on this would be we now lock these inner arms off. So the little black wheel that we touched on at the beginning of this, once we've finished and we're happy with the awning, the last thing we'll always do is lock this in place, which now means if this gets quite windy, this is not going anywhere. So this will not move because we've locked it off. So really easy to set up. Obviously, there is a few different scenarios to this. And one thing to highlight is we are keeping it clipped onto the trailer. So this would be more your quick stays. Um, but obviously, for strength, very, very good keeping it clipped on, being that it's anchored at the base, it's anchored through the midline, and then it's also screwed in at the top through the line. So awning is now done. Uh, I'm going to show you the kitchen now. So obviously, I can do this one by myself. So we've got three locks. We open up the compartment. Now, being that it's a stinking hot day, I would always open this area up first and get myself a cold beverage. That'll always be the first thing, so key point. So fridge is out, 
Now this will roll itself and lock itself into position. Once it does that slight drop, this will now not move. I can come in. Fortunately, I don't have a beer today, so I'm going to pretend I've got one. So I'm now cracking my cold beer. I'm going to close this back down. The next thing I would then do is roll the main kitchen itself out, which you can see through these two orange tabs that releases the kitchen so then I can bring this out. I'll bring this out to the end of its travel where it won't go in any further. We'll see on the side here where we've uh, changed slightly with the Series 5, we bought, brought the gas connection round to the side. So a very easy point now before we slide this lid over to connect this up now. So we connect this on, I'll then drop my sink drain down I we'll tend to have a bucket here, so obviously when I do start using the sink, I can drain that off into there. I can then bring across the slide across bench. So we can see with the new bench, um, we've moved the power points in order to accommodate this bench. So we can still access the power points where we've got our 240 points TV connection and 12 volt socket. So that's all accessible. We've got a good slide preparation area here with a little hanging sockets on the end so we can hang tea towels, garbage bags, pans, stuff like that, so very handy. We've got our three burner stove with our sink built in, so that's all one feature now, um, which makes it a hell of a lot easier to clean, being that we can easily wipe off into the sink. Uh, and one other thing just to outline, which a lot of people wouldn't think is, is that the sink is now off to this right hand side, so it means that I can wash up and easily store straight on the preparation area, whereas prior to this, these were actually switched the opposite way around. We've got storage above in our two drawers, which are also now standard as part of the Series 5 model. Um, so they, these have got any dividers where we can remove these out. Depending on what we're storing in there, we can tailor them to suit. So two good storage areas. We've got our lift across pantry, which is going to be one of the main storage areas in this kitchen. Cutlery drawer, along with the big drawer underneath the actual kitchen itself. So as you can see, we've got quite a lot of storage in this area. And that is before I get to my favorite, the lift up pantry. So this will always be one of your last things that you set up uh, in terms of your pantry. But you can see that's taken, let's say, two, three minutes. And that's obviously me talking over the top of this. But you can just see that this is just so easy to set up. Even if I was on my own, it's easy. If I've got someone else to help with the awning, that makes it a little bit quicker. But the whole design of the Quantum is to be easy and efficient of setting up outside, being that it is an outside cooking trailer. So beautiful kitchen, good storage area, preparation area, and I've still got plenty of room underneath this awning. So this is not rolled out to its full extent, um, which if it was, obviously I'd have even more shaded area here, which on a day like today is, is invaluable. So packing this away, just to carry on moving on the outside. So again, once I do this a bit quicker, you'll see how easy it is to pack away as well as set up. So within literally 30 seconds, that is packed away again. So if the weather ever changes on you, it's not a hassle having to back up and move side. So kitchen we've covered. Uh, we'll carry on down this side, just covering some of the other features. So tinted windows, obviously you can see on the plus being that it's got nice big windows and that that is a really big, nice tinted window. So we don't get too much uh, in terms of visual through. So if we are sat inside, it is good privacy. Plus heat, on a day like today, we're not gonna get a lot of heat passing through here, which is really, really good. And um, the door itself is the two-piece door. And um, so with this, again, highlighting with the heat we've got today, this great feature of allowing airflow to pass through here means that we can open this screen door separately, clip that on, and the main door will still function as normal. But we can get some airflow passing through there. Yep. You'll also be able to see, obviously, we've got the roof skirt windows. So one of the big features to the pop top is these nice big open windows. The airflow that we get through there is phenomenal. And this this is what highlights towards whether a lot of people um, opt for air conditioning, whereas we wouldn't see it that common in the pop tops for that reason. Yep. So just moving around to the back, we've then got a different, a bit of a, an option on this trailer. So a bit of a different setup to what we would see as standard, but we've got generator box to the right. So that's designed for a 2 kVA Honda predominantly. Uh, we can store that in there and then that comes part and parcel with the two extra jerry cam holders on the rear. 
And we've also got the new shower fitting on the rear, which we've just done a separate video on. So Theo did a great video on that, showing us that new feature where we've got rid of the two taps and we've gone to the quick release fitting, which has also got a flick mixer, so awesome for saving water. A spare tire in the middle, which is always going to be standard. That does come with the garbage bag on the rear, so we can store garbage in there or whether we store hoses in there. Just another handy look storage area. Um, top left hand corner, we've got a TV aerial connection point. So if we did want to adopt TV in this trailer, um, the aerial is an option, but that would plug into the rear and then we would have connection points inside and outside in order to connect the TV through to that as well. Um, external light is an option, so that's not standard, but that's been done on this trailer. Moving round to the driver's side, we've got our 240 inlet. So this is where we charge the trailer, whether that's at home or whether that's at a, a caravan park. So again, standard feature. Um, two water tanks will always be standard. The third tank, if you ever see our trailers with a third filler, that is an additional option that that particular trailer has been added with. So this one's got the three tanks in, the additional 60. Um, gas hot water system which is nice and easy to use. We basically just have to drop this down, turn the gas on. Inside is where we'd operate the hot water system. But as long as this is down and open so it can breathe, that is going to fire up within about 10 to 15 minutes. So nice and easy, very, very efficient with gas. We then roll around to our three lockers. So first locker would be open storage. Now, if anyone did go for air conditioning in a pop-top model, that is where it would live. Being that it's a heavier unit, we try to keep it closer to the axle. Um, obviously, if you don't have air conditioning, you've got an awesome storage compartment there. Next one along is going to be a pull-out storage bin. So a nice big bin there. Um, a lot of the items that we give you as standard with the trailer would tend to live in here on the day of pickup, which is going to be things like the floor matting, um, hoses, leads, maintenance kits with spare bearings, plumbing fittings, things like that. So... Really good storage area for all their little items. And then in the last compartment down this side, we've got the two gas bottles. So obviously these are the gas bottles that run the trailer. One will be operational, one will be a spare. Obviously when, we, when you run out of the first gas bottle, we'll just switch over to the second. And then we move to the pull carrier hatch, which we touched on earlier on. So being that we've got access from both sides, this is going to be a, a mirror image of what we've got on the passenger side, where we've got access through to that pull carrier hatch. And that about covers the outside, guys. So the only other thing that I will touch on is the outside colour scheme on this trailer. Um, now, being this has got the vinyl wrap on, which we have touched in some of the other models, um, just in a different colour scheme. So again, it's good to see the options that the vinyl wrap brings into play with colours. Um, so this would be classed as the fighter jet grey to the lower half in the armour finish. So that is your heavy-duty stone impact coating, designed to obviously withstand a lot of, of uh, damage that can occur on the trailer through either rubbing or scrubbing or just through impact of stones flicking up so really good for that purpose the top half would be the dove gray wrap in the shield as we call it the smooth finish um, and this one's actually got the new self-healing ppf over the top so the beauty of that is this stuff actually self-heals through the heat and um, prime day for it so if we did get any scratches any surface scratches in the top of this from trees or things like that um, a lot of these would actually come out through the heat so awesome awesome new feature which is available on the trailers now. So if anyone's got any questions around the, the Quantum Plus, the Series 5 models, the wraps, uh, don't hesitate, give us a call, and we hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Luke again here, guys, uh, back with the Quantum Plus Series 5. Uh, we've just done a quick lap of the outside, just highlighting the features. Uh, we needed to get a quick water break because it is quite hot today. Uh, so now we're going to hop inside, and I'm going to show you some of the features. So straight away, just moving into the doorway, um, you will see here... We've got all the electrics at the doorway. So being that this trailer is predominantly outside living, we understand that you're going to spend a lot more time outside. So the access here through the door means that you can easily access from, for these from outside without having to come inside. So we've got the Red Art controller where we can check our water levels, our tank readings. We can check a solar. We can also switch a lot of the components on here, whether that's inside lights or outside lights. Um, we've got a different gauge, so we can't get it mistaken for grey water and also black water. So that's if the trailer's got a macerator toilet. Um, here we've got our inverter, so that switches separately as well. And then last but not least, we've got the diesel cabin here, which is one of your standard features. So awesome little feature for your colder climates. All navigated from here. 
Um, one thing to highlight would be that the red art can be controlled through your phone. So obviously you can control it if you're in bed, um, if you're in the car and you just want to pull over and check a water tank level, you don't have to come in and actually open the trailer up. So great, great little feature there for convenience. Uh, so moving along, obviously in here, I've already done some videos separately on the bunk beds. So I kind of showed you how they configure and set up and pack away. So you will see there is a few items on the bed. Now these are all really tailored into that bunk bed area, whether, whether the table's in there or the bunk. So I'm not going to do too much in there. But just highlighting the seating area in the Quantum Plus, we've got the longer bench seat on the passenger side with the cafe dinette style seating here where your table would obviously be set between the two seats. So if the weather's not so great um, or you just want to hop inside on a night, very, very cozy in here and um, plenty of room as well. Um, good little feature, which is an option, which has been added into this trailer is this storage cabinet behind the rear seat. Um, so we've got two open pockets just behind the backrest and then this hidden little compartment down just to the side where the shower cubicle is, where we've got all additional storage. So good to see that. We don't see this often too much, um, but it just shows you obviously different things can be done. That will also come with power points in there as well. Uh, moving into the bed area, we've got the standard queen bed um, with the eight inch inner spring mattress. Um, again, another option which we've done a separate video on is the bunk above the main bed. So just showing you that for family of five, we can accommodate the three additional beds on top of the main bed. Um, down the side of the mattress, we've got standard tie down points. So anything big that we've got that we can't necessarily fit in one of the outside lockers, we could actually strap it onto the bed during travel. Um, prime example could be pr predominantly this table. So if we did have the bunk set up permanently, we might store the table on there during travel. Uh, we've got the one standard fan, which is actually running at the minute and stopping me from being a wet mess because um, it is quite hot in here. But yeah, that one fan is very, very good. Um, a common option would be to get two fans where you can see this one's got a second socket in and that would be in, in anticipation of a second fan. But that socket is not standard. Just highlighting that. Uh, the standard roof lifters, so you did kind of see me earlier on lift the roof up. Um, once we've set the awning and things outside, we can easily jump in here and lift these up through the two lifters being lifted together. Yep. Um, speakers, which we are going to be a bit hard to see because they're just tucked underneath this uh, additional bed, would be situated at the head of the bed and the stereo would be just in the back corner. So um, the stereo itself is obviously standard. The speakers are standard. We tend to keep the noise up the bed area. So if you are laid in bed watching TV, um, things like that, or you're listening to music, you can hear it from that area. Uh, the two windows in the seating area, uh, sorry, in the bed area, we've got the two big windows, which are going to be tinted. So whether you can see that on the video, you've got really good views out through them. Whereas when you're looking from the outside in, very hard to see through. So that's that tinted feature that we've got. Um, the Quantum Plus will offer a window behind this bunk as well. So obviously during the day, if we weren't using the bunk, that's where we'd lift it up, lock it into position, and then we've got some light coming through there as well, and we've got good viewing. And now we've opened up all the roof skirt windows in this trailer to get some air in. And it's actually quite nice in here now with the fan going. And um, it just shows to you, you've got plenty of open windows that you can open up in here. One for light, but two for airflow. So on a day like today where we've got 34 degrees, uh, that is invaluable. Uh, moving through into lights, so you can see we've got lights in the pelmet all around the trailer. So these are all individually controlled, so we can switch them on and off individually. Um, you're going to have two at the head of the bed, and then you're going to have a run down either side, plus the one at the rear. So very good lighting internally, but a lot of your natural light during the day is going to come through these, these uh, windows in the roof skirt anyway. Just moving into storage, we've got three drawers under the bed. Um, so we can open one of these up, so quite generous on size coming really handy for them undergarments or just soft storage of linens and towels and things like that. And then the main drawers themselves would be situated at the back of the trailer where we've got the rear vanity drawers. So they're your bigger drawers um, with all shoe storage underneath. So one thing that has changed in the Quantum Plus Series 5 is we brought back the full storage underneath for shoes, whereas previously in the 4 that was only 50% and then we actually had an electrical component hidden behind there. Um, so I'm going to touch on that slightly in a second, but full storage in shoes at the bottom. We've got the little drawer at the top as well, which comes in handy for electrical goods and things like that. Uh, we can now see the standard stereo. We can see the standard points at the rear. And um, being that this trailer is going to the USA, the power points are slightly different. So they would be the normal 240 points. 
with a 12 volt socket and a double USB as standard, but also an internal TV connection point. Yep, sink's gonna be here with hot and cold water. As long as there's hot water systems on, we'll have hot feed here. Um, shower area, same thing. We're gonna have a hot and cold feed there, um, as long as that hot water system's been switched on. And then you will see that this one's got the composting toilet in, which again, we have done a separate video on today. Uh, just highlighting some of the differences and just a bit of an overview on the toilet and how it operates. So quite a generous size in terms of the shower cubicle. You have got your separate floor pan area for the shower in itself. And um, you do have a flick mixer in the shower cubicle as standard as well. And then just moving on to more into that, I suppose, some of the technical side. So just access underneath these actual seats themselves um, is going to be some form of storage or electrical components. So what has changed in the Quantum Plus Series 5 is that we've removed the inverter from that back compartment and we've actually put it the same as the Quantum behind the kitchen, which in turn means that we've switched around some of the electrics to keep everything close by. So we do have a bit of storage under here now, which we never did. Um, also in that area is going to be the diesel heater. So we put a baffle in there to divide that area off. It just shows you obviously there is some usable space there, uh, which comes in quite handy. So that's going to be in the seat closest to the shower cubicle. Uh, we're then going to move over to the seat closest to the bed area. So this will be taken with appliances. So we've got gas hot water system in the back corner. We've got the uh, two standard water filters, which are going to be standard on every trailer. And then we've got the water pump down the bottom as well, plus our circuit breakers, which are accessible from here. So they're going to be for your 240 new inverter. Uh, rather than having to lift the cushion seat off, we can just easily flick this hatch off and flick them back on, back on if they do uh, flip themselves off. So that's fully taken, but just shows you what's under there. The middle access actually gives us access to our uh, uh, switching off tanks. So depending on what tank scenario we've got in the trailer, and um, being that this one's got three tanks, we've got a tap for the front tank, we've got a tap for the rear tank, and then we've got a tap for the middle tank. So that allows us to switch between which tank we want to use in terms of shower water, uh, sink water, all that kind of thing. So there is different options with the tanks. So you would always see the two on the rear as standard. If there ever is a third one, that is an additional, which is a, an option, obviously. Uh, standard 240 GPOs, again, slightly different in this trailer, but they would be standard with your 240 on. Uh, moving across to the seat module at the rear of the trailer, we've got the hot water system gas switch where we can switch between 60 and 70 degrees. So that's where we operate the hot water system from. As long as the cover on the outside is down, that will all function and obviously the gas is turned on. Uh, we've got a little night light switch here, which we switch on from the base of the bed so we can easily turn that on during the night. And um, we're not going to see the full benefits of that being that it's quite bright in the trailer, but on a night, very, very good feature in that it's nice and subtle. It's not going to be as bright as these LEDs in the pelmet. So that would just illuminate this hallway for you in case you were just going to the toilet during the night. And um, we've then got the diesel heater outlet. So if we were using that diesel heater, um, that's, this is where the hot air is going to um, circulate out from. And then last but not least, this is where some of the changes have happened. Now, being that this is the first Quantum Plus we have made in the Series 5, and um, this is slightly different again now, but just to highlight in this area where this was full storage last time, we now have electrical components in there. So these are actually going to move across further to the bedside, which in turn is going to give us about 30 to 40% of this area back as storage, which when you combine that 30 to 40% with what we've got underneath the seat and closest to the shower, means that we haven't lost storage. All we've done is actually manipulated it between the two compartments rather than all being in the one. And this is all to gain back that shoe storage and keep all the electrics together. So this one, like I say, slightly different in that we've taken the whole compartment. That won't be the case for anyone that's either ordering a Quantum Plus or got a Quantum Plus on order in the Series 5 from now on. So just highlighting in this one, We've got the two batteries, which are the two 150. So they're the new standard lithiums that are in the Quantum and Quantum Plus. Uh, we've got the Red Arc distribution box. We've got the 2000 watt inverter. And then obviously we've got a series of fuse boards, circuit breakers, uh, Anderson connections, them types of things. So you're not going to come in this compartment too often. The main reasoning you would come in here in the newer trailers will be to access that storage. Yeah. So if you've got any questions on that or it doesn't quite make sense, just give us a call. Um, but yeah, just wanted to kind of highlight what has changed in terms of where things are positioned and what storage is done. 
so that gives us a good overview inside um obviously we've covered the outside we've covered the inside it just gives you an overview of what can be done but one of the really good features which we haven't done videos on before is going to be these bunk beds so if you're quite interested around that or you want to see how it all works uh, watch the separate video that we did obviously just showing you how to set them up during the day and how to bring the table into play as well once you've lifted your roof um hope you enjoyed the video guys um, any questions at all you know where we are and thanks for watching